Welcome to the Business Forum Show. I'm Kevin Hunter with Craig Nestor, and our special guest on the show is Tony Haven. And Tony is from Pro Plumbing Solutions, and you can find him on the web at ProPlumbingSolutions.net. Well, we'll get back to that in just a moment, but welcome to the show, Tony. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. I'm glad to have you here. So tell us a little bit about yourself. You've had the cur- your current business for 14 years, but let's have a little discussion about what you were doing before then and what got you into uh, having your own plumbing business. Well, I, uh, I worked for a, a shop, a place in town here, driving a forklift for 12 years uh, and got out of that. I wanted to learn a trade, uh, learn a skill, something uh, that I can kind of fall back on. Uh, so I got into the plumbing business. Uh, I, I went into the union, went down to Dunwoody and went to school for five years. Actually, I went to six years. I had some pre-apprenticeship. And uh, so I was working as an apprentice for the union shops downtown. And uh, mm-hmm. while I was going to school in the evening, um, got my journeyman's license and continued to work uh, at some of those uh, shops downtown and uh, some of the bigger shops. But I wanted to get into service plumbing. I kind of wanted to do uh, like go to people's houses, fix water heaters, uh, faucets, stuff like that. That's what I wanted to get into. That's what I envisioned when I got into plumbing. And so I transferred to a service shop, uh, and still that was working great. Ells Master Plumbing is who I worked for, and they were great. Uh, they kind of combined into a great big shop, uh, Benjamin Franklin, and I didn't really like that. I moved on to another shop, um, and it was great. I really loved service plumbing. I loved going to customers and, and working with customers. It was working great for me, um, but I just didn't like uh, the way they ran their business, how I was treated, and some of the things uh, that they wanted me to do and how much money I had to make each day. It just seemed like it was never enough money. Uh, no matter how much I made, it was just, you know, I was making two or $3,000 a day and it wasn't enough. It was, what, what have you done for me lately? You know, what have you done for me today? It's good yesterday. But so I, I was working for uh, that shop uh, downtown there and I uh, told them they kept calling me in and calling me and said, I'm not making enough money. I'm not making enough money for them. And I, I just, I couldn't believe I was, they were calling me in here. So I kept telling them, you know, I think you're laying me off every time you call me in here. I'm and, getting fired every single day. Yeah, show for yeah, three thousand dollars Every, every, time, you guys, every right. time you guys call me in here, I think you're laying me off. And yeah. so the, the one time they called me in, I finally had enough. I told my buddies this was going to happen, and I, I brought in all my stuff, my fax machine and my GPS and everything, and, and put it on his desk. And he says, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! We're not going to lay you off." And I said, "Yeah, you are." <laughs> I said, I, I, "I can't do this anymore. Just, just lay me off, you know, because this, this is ridiculous, you know, because it's like I said, it was just they were constantly calling me in and." Uh, I always wanted to start my own shop, but I kind of have to have to have my back against the wall to do it, I guess. And that's what I did. I didn't even have my master's license when I did that. And uh, they laid me off. I went and got my master's license, uh, wrote out the unemployment for about a year, um, started my own shop, and uh, you know, joined the B&I group. I uh, really haven't looked back. Well, Craig, the old story about business people with their backs against the walls, does that sound kind of familiar? <laughs> well, sometimes we just have to take action, right? Yep. And sometimes we need something to compel us to take that action. Yep, that's and it me. looks like Tony found his. Yep, that's what I had to have. I almost have to have my back against the wall. I always wanted to do it, but might not have ever done it. And then, you know, of course, the economy was terrible when I did it. Everybody thought I was crazy, and maybe they're right, but, uh, you know, um, <laughs> so far now it's just broke free. It's just been busy as heck. So, I mean, there were some nip and tuck times I wasn't sure I was going to make it there, but... Uh, now it's just great. I mean, the economy seems it broke free, and uh, it's just crazy busy right now. Everybody's yeah. busy. Everybody now, everybody's hiring. You know, I, I got a little sign in my shop that I wrote down uh, when I started my own business that says "Failure's not an option," mm-hmm. and that was no bull. It really wasn't because there was nobody hiring plumbers <laughs> then. I mean, there was nobody hiring. Nobody. Nobody was building. Nobody was spending any money. Um, but you know, like I said I've been through word of mouth, been slowly growing and growing and growing, and uh, I don't see any turning back now. Well, you know, what's interesting about that. I'm glad you said that it wasn't an option because, you know, Craig will tell you the same thing with with coaching businesses and whatnot, is that uh, in order to help somebody, their next step can't be optional. If it is, well, then you're just helping some, you're you're visiting with somebody or coaching somebody who's just going, well, I don't know, I'll give it a try and see what happens. that's great information, thanks. And and whenever you do, yeah, good information. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, we'll think about that for a couple of weeks. And, and nothing ever happens, and and until it's not optional, somebody really can't be helped. And there's all kinds of business people out there with their backs against the wall. We we know it because 96 percent of business people won't get to that 10 year anniversary. It looks like you did. Mm. You know, congratulations. Good work. Now now, now we have to um, just try help turn that business into a machine that you can you know sell someday and retire on and be comfortable with because that's you know that's the next step but yep, that's what i'm working on now yep yeah so you got past that 10 year mark and and uh and, and and good for you any any major challenges or struggles that you've run into in your organization but the challenges now is is keeping up with all the stuff the phone calls and you know i've had all my girlfriends taking my office over and doing my office work and doing the books honestly without her I, there's no way i could be doing this it's just too much for one person 
Um, so that that's the challenge now is now uh, keeping track of all this stuff and the phone calls and uh, the scheduling uh, and stuff like that, which she's helping me out with a lot. And slowly but surely, I'm turning more of that over to her and the phones and everything too. Uh, and that's the challenge now. Is uh, you know, before it was making sure I had money to pay the bills next month. That was my challenge, and now it's just keeping track of all this stuff that's coming in mm -hmm. and trying to keep all my customers happy. Yeah, well, that's just the beginning of a team, is what it sounds right. like. <laughs> and that and that whole, you know, when we talk to business people about some of their number one challenges in business, like you're getting into that phase where you start to develop uh, people working for you. So you got somebody else handling the phones and. And now you're, you, you mentioned about uh, bringing on an apprentice and some additional people. Yep. <clears throat> that whole management cycle of, of, of those people and being able to use their, their talents. And then not getting into this rut where a lot of business people are because they're kind of control freaks. And they'll tell people, well, this is the way you're going to do this. And, you know, hey, Craig, I want you to do this, but here's how you're going to do it. And I tell business people all the time, you know, for every set of hands you hire, you get a free brain. Why not use it? Mm. You know, so sure. <laughs> you run into that. <laughs> Well, I think what we see with, with Tony is he's in that spot now where he's past survival. Yep. And now he has to build. Yep. And so how do we diversify him and how do we build that business scalable? So it's like you said, Kevin, how, what's our exit strategy for that sole business owner? Yeah. So he doesn't just work till he drops. Right. 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 Yeah. Uh, otherwise, it just ends up being a 14 plus year job. And you're working for yourself, which sounds like for you that's worked out better than working for the guy you fight. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I like that story. Yeah, I like my new boss a lot better than my old boss. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Occasionally, people start throwing business, and they say, "That moron I have to work for." I look in the mirror every day. Yeah, I got no. That's the only thing. I, I got nobody to blame now. I, yeah. no, there's nobody else to blame but me. So I, it's just me. So. so if you could rewind the clock, anything you'd do different? Uh, for me, no, I don't think because I, I wouldn't recommend doing it the way I did it. But yeah. for me, it's probably the only way I would have done it um, because just the way like I said with going into my boss, most people wouldn't have done that. I'm kind of a redneck that way. And uh, uh, for me, it's, it's, it would have been the, it's the only way. So no, I don't think I would have changed anything, no. Excellent. Well, glad to have you here with us today, Tony. Uh, Kevin Hunter with Craig Nestor on the Business Forum Show. Our special guest has been Tony Haven. And we love the fact that Tony fired his boss. You can, too. <laughs> Start your own business and uh, do what Tony's done. He has uh, Pro Plumbing Solutions. You can find him on the web, proplumbingsolutions.net, and his contact number, 763-245-9049. Again, 763-245-9049. Kevin Hunter here with Craig Nestor. Our guest is Tony Haven. Thanks for listening. <laughs>